welcome everyone. We're going to get started with a demo of the SQL tool belt and I'm going to leave you with our pre-sales engineer Chris Randabeer to take you through that. Go ahead Chris. Thank you Annabelle and uh, and again thanks everyone here that's on the uh, on the session today. We're going to talk about the tool belt and what that is and 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 how people actually use this whole thing. I think when we when we start talking about the tool belt, uh, really what it is is obviously as a conglomerate of different products that we've developed over the years and packaged them all up into this nice licensing model that we call the tool belt. But the biggest component within that tool belt is this product that we call SQL change automation. This is where all the magic happens. This is where really the impact of what we're doing here at Redgate all comes together, which is really to introduce the database into a life cycle that no longer impedes software delivery. This has historically always been the challenge, obviously, for a lot of our customers, you know, especially as we become more and more agile with our application code and delivery of that code. Leaving the database behind has always been that challenge. So now what we're trying to do is to have our customers with using the tools and the features within that tool belt to really start to include the database along for that transition and now alleviate the database from being viewed as that bottleneck in terms of software delivery. So I'm gonna go through a normal process change here, a day in the life of a developer and how and call out different tools, I guess you can say, or different features within the tool belt, where they come up and where that value is within delivery. Okay, and we'll take changes, we'll capture changes, we'll go ahead and commit and push those changes, and then talk about what we can do in terms of validation of those changes, and then deployment of those changes, okay, and those kinds of uh, tools that we can also integrate with along the way. Uh, any questions, folks, as I go through this half hour session with you, by all means, just go ahead and put that in the chat window or in the QA section there. And uh, as we kind of rope around the back end of this call, I'll try and come into those questions and, uh, and answer them accordingly, okay? All right, let's kind of begin this journey here. So I'm showing on screen Management Studio. This is where we're all making changes and managing our environments, obviously. Uh, the first product that I really want to talk about here is more of a foundational tool, which is SQL Source Control. When I talk to customers that are new to this process, new to this journey, if you will, uh, I always begin at the foundation. I always look at this as a house being built, right? I wanna first and foremost, have a strong foundation. If I have a strong foundation, then I can go ahead and start framing my house and I can start building it accordingly. But that foundation is where everything begins. And in this case here, this is gonna have to be viewed as source control, source control for the database that is, okay? Uh, I talk to a lot of customers every day. I'll ask that question usually about whether or not you're source controlling your database. I get a 50% yes, 50% no to that uh, question. Those folks that tell me that they are source controlling as I continue to ask questions there, I'll find out that they're actually not really source controlling the entire database. They might have some selected tables out there. They might have some stored procedures out there. What we're talking about is the entire database, okay? And we're gonna be using some engines that you might be familiar with, SQL Compare, for example. So when I talk about SQL source control, this is not to be confused with Git or Azure DevOps or Subversion. Those are version control systems. What SQL Source Control is, is a plugin here to Management Studio, and it bridges you over or links you over to that version control system that you might be currently using. Uh, currently, you know, we support everything out there. I think right now, most of my customers are pretty strictly in Git or Azure DevOps or get within Azure DevOps. Uh, there's a little sprinkle of subversion out there, but uh, that is fading away, I think, uh, over the last 12 months in terms of my conversations. Uh, I'm gonna be using a specific environment here for my demonstration. This is my SQL Server Central environment, okay? And you can see within the licensing, you're gonna get an introduction of different tabs now within Management Studio. The setup tab is going to give you a nice little visual here in terms of what version control system this database is linked to. In this case here, I'm gonna be using the old centralized version of TFS. You also notice here that you got some comparison and some filtering options. These are from the comparison tool. If you're familiar with SQL Compare, 
this is our flagship product here. This is how Redgate was initially established. Um, and if you have no exposure to compare, do yourselves a favor and take a look at this product. It will save your life in terms of operations. It allows you to just basically look at a source environment and a target environment, compare those two, and then compare will show me what is different between those two environments. And then I can go ahead and actually take those changes through compare and deploy to that target environment here. And there's some really nice features in terms of being able to, you know, ignore certain attributes. For example, I might not want to, you know, bring permissions over or users that are present in development to say a higher environment where they're not supposed to be. So really nice uh, value add in terms of that functionality. Uh, the locking tab here, again, self-explanatory. If I'm in a shared model, you know, obviously, I think this is something of a challenge for a lot of my customers, right? I have a shared development database. I've got multiple folks making changes against that database. Uh, and oftentimes this causes conflicts, right? I make a change to an object, a colleague makes changes as well. I submit my changes for review. The same can be said for my colleague. And now I'm leaving it to some other entity, usually a DBA or some individual there that has to kind of manage that, whose change came in first, whose change actually gets deployed first. This is a problem obviously within the life cycle here. So being able to lock an object down is something that I find to be very advantageous in a shared model. I can come into this database, for example, at any time, open up an object, and you can go ahead and lock it down. And what this does here obviously is it gives me a nice little visual indicator here in terms of this object being locked. But in terms of just the locking tab here, this UI will give the entire team that visibility here of who has this object locked most importantly, and the type of object. And again, if I lock this object, this is not the only thing, uh, I'm not the only individual that can unlock it. Anybody within the project can unlock the object. It's just meant for that preventative maintenance aspect here. So this is a nice, uh, this is a nice key here. If I'm not in a shared model, obviously this is not something I need to worry about. I'm now in a dedicated model, very, very much so like the Git workflow, right? I'm working independently. I don't worry about anybody else conflicting with my work. I'm committing changes locally as well. When I'm ready to expose those changes, I then do a push and, and then those changes then become viewable to the rest of the, uh, the collective out there. If this is the scenario, then the get latest tab will then be something that gets initialized within this workflow. And what the get latest tab does is it does just that. It goes out to that common repository, again, using the comparison engine looks for any changes. So this is where I would see those commits and pushes from my other teammates now that will be shown here and then allow for me obviously to go ahead and bring those changes down into my local copy of development. And this is really within a dedicated model how the teams stay in consistency with source control. Okay, I'm gonna go through this process, kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So when I take a database, for example, and link it over to a source control system, I'm gonna open up uh, Azure DevOps here. This is my repository for the project, as you can see. And I've got a couple of folders here that I've established, one for my application code and the other here, obviously, for my database code. And within this folder structure that gets created by SQL source control, each of these folders are going to have the current state of those associated objects. For example, I'll take my stored procedures here and I'll pull up one of these guys here randomly. Okay, all of these are now SQL scripts in source control, all in the form of create scripts, as you guys can see. Okay, these now become the source of comparison. All right, so now as a developer, I can make changes in that database dynamically. I don't have to do a checkout, check in, I don't have to do anything of that nature make changes to those objects in the database dynamically and allow SQL source control and the engine of compare to constantly look at the state of these create scripts and compare them to the state of those associated objects in the database. And this gives me now as a developer an opportunity to also review those changes, make sure that those changes are in fact the ones that I've made. And then from Management Studio, be able to go ahead and make a very detailed comment as to what those changes are, maybe even associate those to, uh, to a user story or to some change request or however those folks are tracking those changes as well, okay? Let's get kicking off here. I might wanna start off with doing some development work here. One of the first tools I wanna just quickly call out here, which is a really nice one. This is something called SQL Search. SQL Search is uh, it's a piece of freeware to be honest with you right now, but in terms of just 
understanding where everything is, you know, we as developers, we're moving in and out of different database environments constantly here. So this is something that I find to be very uh, advantageous. So I can come into SQL search, for example, and let's say I might be looking for the contacts table. Okay, so you can see I could put a wildcard search in here. It'll pull up everything with the name contacts in it, the schema, the database that it's located in, also the type of object here as well. And of course, if this is the exact object in which I wanna work with, I could just double click on it and it'll bring me right to where that object lives now within the database. This is a really nice tool. I like that just to keep me honest, if you will. Now that I know where that object is, I'm beginning to go ahead and make some change. Let's just say the business has decided that we're gonna engage our customers in a different way. So we might wanna to start to uh, uh, collect some social media, for example. One of the other nice features about the tool belt that I find uh, very advantageous on both sides of the house, both developers and for operations folks, DBAs as well, is uh, a product called Dependency Tracker. Dependency Tracker is really nice because it gives me a nice visual relationship of how my objects are. So for example, because I've been given some charge to make a change to that contacts table, I can right click on that object here and you can see that I can view this dependency diagram here. This will pull up SQL dependency tracker and this will give me a nice overlay, a visual overlay of how that contacts table looks and also all of the associated objects here to it. If I click on this guy here, you can see in the lower right hand corner, I've got some dependencies. I work with this database all the time. So I already know that I've got a stored procedure, for example, that works with that contacts table. So if I'm making a change to that table, it's safe to say I might wanna also take a peek at that stored procedure as well. I can right click on this as well. I can see how the SQL looks for that object in version control. Just a really nice feature to have to really understand what I call the ripple effects of my change, right? I wanna make sure that when I do make a change, I'm not gonna cause problems elsewhere. Another nice product there within the tool belt. All right, now that I've got that visibility, I think I'm safe to go ahead and start making change, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the designer here. And you can see we're already engaging our customers here with uh, grabbing their LinkedIn profiles, grabbing their Twitter IDs here. Let's say uh, TikTok's all the new rage, right? So why not? Let's go ahead and grab their, uh, their TikTok uh, I don't know, whatever you call a TikTok, an ID, an account, something of that nature. We'll go ahead and create the TikTok column. Go ahead and save that off. All right, because I saw that in Dependency Tracker and I know that I work with this database all the time, I'm gonna go ahead and make a modification to that get contact store procedure as well. We Let reduce this down here. I don't know why this always opens up with 194%. Now, before I make any modifications, here's another tool. Uh, and I say tool lightly, this is a feature. This is another flagship product that I really think most of our customers really know Regate by. If you do not know about SQL Prompt, then this is going to be your lucky day. Anything that you folks are doing SQL wise, this tool is meant for you. This is our auto IntelliSense tool, auto suggestion, auto completion, auto formatting, snippets, tab coloring. I mean, again, this will change your life with respect to making you writing SQL more efficiently. One of the things that I want to call out here, you notice as I bring that stored procedure up here, is that this is underlining here. So this lets you know that we're flagging this for some code analysis sweeps here. For example, as you can see, as I hover over this, my entire procedure body is not enclosed properly with a begin and an end. Got the dreaded select star statement. This would kill me in operations in my day. When, when this kind of came across and I deployed this into a higher environment and brought that down to a crawl, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar I was trying to get the developer who promoted that change to you know, let them know exactly how to get that a little bit more tightened up here. Uh, but this just again gives me some really good visibility on how to get that code tightened up here. One of the nice features is, is particular here, I can put my cursor after that star, press tab, you can see I can expand my wildcards really quickly. This is, a, this is a nice feature as well. Execute. One last thing before I kick off here, because I do want to show another value add to SQL prompt. You'll notice uh, one thing that I think a lot of my customers ask about is data, okay? If you have the need to source control your data, static data, I should say, in development, this is also a feature within 
the tool belt. If I right click on that database, come down here to other SQL source control tasks, you can see that I can link or unlink static data. This is gonna pull up all of my lookup tables here. You can see that I've got RSS feeds, I've got country codes flagged. So now in development, if I'm doing some inserts here into those tables, I'm gonna track that change no differently than I can uh, an object change within Management Studio. Let me show you that played out. And I'm gonna use snippets here as well, okay? So I'm gonna open up a new query window and snippets is a shortcut, for example. So I'm gonna do an insert into that table here. I already created a snippet where I'm gonna do a double line. I'm gonna tab, you can see it auto complete into that statement. And then I start typing my table name. You can see it already starting to populate, I tab. And now I have this nice little boilerplate template here for me to start to begin doing some inserts of data, okay? Very poor data representation here, but in the interest of time, I think we all get what we're doing here. I'll take my nulls out. Give it some value and execute this as well, okay? So a couple of normal development changes that you've made. Also a little call out here. You notice over here in Object Explorer, you start seeing these little blue blobs or globes starting to appear. If I open up this folder, it'll actually end up at the actual object in which I've made a change, okay? Um, I do see the questions in there. I will come back to you uh, in terms of Azure Data Studio, for sure, hang in there. Uh, with respect to this change here, you can see, as if I'm a secondary developer now, this table has some changes to commit. So if I needed to make a change, for example, into this object, I wanna make sure and go out to whoever made a change, when can I expect to see that actually in source control? Because I'd wanna work with the most current state of an object before I actually commit my work. So a nice little speed bump, if you will, preventative maintenance in terms of that conflict. When I'm ready to go ahead and commit that change, I'm gonna come into source control and I'm going to hit commit. When I do so, here's that comparison that's gonna take place. And again, looking at the, uh, the state of those scripts out in source control and comparing them over to the database version. So now as a developer here, I can go one by one and inspect and make sure that in fact, yeah, this is actually my change that I've made here. So it's giving me a nice visual delta to show me what is different between those objects all the way down here to my data change, okay? Now, as a developer, obviously, before I come ahead and commit these changes and talk about the pipeline, visibility is key with respect to the value of source control. At any time, you can right-click on an object, on a database here, come down to view history. This is always gonna show me or the teams you know, what has gone on with this object from the very moment that I made or committed this initial project, created the baseline, if you will, to all the changes that I might have done since then, right? I can see how that object has changed. I can see who on my team made that change. I can see when that change was committed into source control, right? You want to, of course, have a little bit more robust commenting here. Don't take my example as best practice. Uh, but this is really the ability to just by reading those comments, you can get a very good idea as far as what state that object is and how it got to that state. And then down here again, a nice comparison in terms of what revision that database was and what that revision went to based on that change as well. Okay, The idea between SQL source control or behind SQL source control is everything that you should be doing via version control should be able to be managed here. This is where you as developers are the most performing, the highest productive, all right? I don't want you to move out of this environment to do anything else from a version control standpoint. And as you can see up top here, you can also now make a very detailed comment as to what those changes are. If you are working within Azure DevOps or, or TFS, as you can see, hopefully in the background, and you need to associate this with a work item or a user story, whatever that number was provided to you, just put a pound A and then that item number and then your comment. And this way that can all be correlated over in Azure DevOps slash TFS. Made a change, okay, again, stay consistent with my poor commenting and go ahead and commit that change in there. I'm just pushing the object changes in now. I'm gonna keep the data change back for a little bit. And now that I push that change, I move on to my next piece of work, whatever that might be, okay? But now that I have that in place, this allows for me to dynamically capture changes and keep everybody visible to those changes. But now that I have that in place, what's the next piece of this equation? And that is really, 
I want to validate those changes, right? I want to make sure that, in fact, these changes aren't going to cause me problems as I move that closer and closer to, the, uh, to production. Another nice thing about Azure DevOps for a lot of my customers is this is all within that product, uh, this family of products. So I can have a repository version control and I can also create a nice build and release pipeline here as well. You can see based off of my commit, I already have a validation process kicking off now where we're doing things now like automation, uh, automated builds, I should say, for the database, where I'm going to validate the consistency of your schema. We're going to be looking for things like valid objects or broken dependencies, anything obviously that would not allow me to recreate that database successfully based off of the create scripts that I have in version control. Testing, as you can see now running through this uh, process here, this is a little bit of a, an area that we didn't uh, take a flyby on here. SQL test is another feature within the tool belt. I always talk about this with my customers, a robust testing function within the life cycle, I think is imperative to really adopt, okay? SQL test, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this application has a couple of different frameworks here. Uh, T SQL T, if you're familiar with that organization, we support those folks here at Redgate. They are familiar and popular with a lot of the unit tests that you can run for SQL Server. And then SQL Comp is the other framework, more for code analysis, looking for, for example, these SP underscores. This would kill me as well in operations, looking for these kinds of things, those select star statements and those stored procedures as well. So you can create, we give you a lot of great tests out of box with SQL tests, but there's no limit to the amount of tests in which you can create there. And you can run these at any time during the life cycle as well to get that feedback, right? The feedback loop needs to be hopefully as close to development as possible here. Also get some code coverage, right? How much of my application code is actually being covered by a SQL test, okay? So again, really good stuff there. Where my customers go, obviously, is as I'm creating those tests, let's go ahead and introduce that into this automated workflow here. The build has already completed. I just wanna quickly show this on screen to you folks on how that got created. What I'm showing here, are build and release extensions that we have provided for, in this case, TFS Azure DevOps. One of the value adds to the Redgate workflow is, is that we're completely agnostic to whatever might be in your environment now, okay? Uh, you might be using other tools like Jenkins, for example, or Team City, or Bamboo, Octopus Deploy, a uh, really uh, popular release management tool, Urban Code Deploy, uh, uh, Excel Deploy, you fill in the blank, okay? Uh, we have the ability to plug into whatever that looks like there. We're not gonna ask you to retool everything in order to receive the benefit of this workflow here. Uh, this build extension uh, is really primi uh, primarily for Azure DevOps, as you can see, a couple of things you guys need to do in terms of configuration of those extensions. In this case here, I'm building a source control project. I'm gonna map out to where that database folder is that I created out in version control. And what do I want that package to be labeled as? So after a build is hopefully successful, we're gonna package that up into a deployable artifact, which is called a NuGet, uh, glorified zip file, to be honest with you. Also Microsoft technology. And then also where does that build take place here? Okay, so I have right now pointing it to a Temporary SQL Server. You can also use local DB here. Um, local DB recommended depends on terms of uh, your environment. I now work with a lot of customers that have cross database references, for example, or link servers. Local DB wouldn't suffice in that kind of scenario. So I think more customers are using just a temporary SQL Server to run those builds on here. I have my database area here blank. And what this is doing is it's actually spinning up a temporary database for the purposes of this validation piece here. And what's going to happen is, again, using the engine of compare, we're going to take those SQL scripts and version control and actually deploy them to that temporary blank database, recreating it from the ground up. This is, again, how we're going to be checking for the consistency of your SQL. You can see here also those tests that we've created in SQL test. I'm running that in an automated fashion as well. Again, feedback instantaneous to the developer. If anything failed here, build failed, some testing has failed, this is immediately known to the developer, right? You're not waiting for some other individual in operations to provide that 
feedback in, in about a day or a week's time, okay? Instantly known. You know why that occurred, make the necessary changes, put it through that same life cycle until we get some success here. I've got another product here also that I want to talk about, which is called SQL Clone. If you have an opportunity, please go to Redgate's website. Uh, all of these products are available for trials. Uh, take a peek at that. What SQL Clone is very quickly is a product that allows for me to leverage a source database, take an image of that database, anywhere between one and 64 terabyte in size, and then provide what we call clones or lightweight copies of that database. And I can do that with a, a very extreme time savings as well as a disk space savings as well. Uh, just imagine I had a two terabyte database, for example, and I've got about 10 developers that all want that environment to work against. The ability to do that with storage is already going to cause me a little concern. But now I can actually give them a clone of that database and locally that might only take about 50 megabyte in size, okay? So keep that in mind, a nice product for you guys to take a peek at after this session. But what I'm using SQL clone here in terms of this validation is, is for example, I'm going to already have an image of my production environment in place. I'm gonna create a clone of that production environment and then actually deploy or sync my changes to that clone of production. So what I'm actually doing here is a, is a deployment to my production environment, but not production, if that makes sense. In terms of releases, same thing, okay? I have a release here that I have configured. Let me show this out here as well. This is a mock pipeline here. This, uh, you know, this is not a one size fits all. Uh, you can see that I have a database build artifact upon successful generation. I'm going to allow it to automatically deploy all the way up to UAT. And this is where I have a manual intervention step that stops everything for the purposes of just that. Allowing for my operation folks, my DBAs to take a look at everything, review the scripts. Um, and again, give it maybe even a sign off here from an auditing standpoint, this is best practice as well. We wanna make sure that we know who and what has actually deployed this into a higher environment, okay? And again, all of my all of my uh, environments here are all set up in the same manner to create a release artifact from that build and then obviously to deploy that release artifact. This is where you can establish, you know, which targets get this change, obviously. But the biggest reason why I have that separated here, let me bring this up really quickly, is this export path that I have created that really gives me a good look at all of the logs and reports that are available to me here. This is how I can get my DBAs on track here. So here you can see, I've got an integration environment already released in there and testing as well. Here's what we're gonna give you to all of those environments. First, we're gonna give you some snapshots as to what that source and what that target environment looked like before we did a deployment. So in case there's any need for maybe a rollback, this is something that will be very advantageous for you guys to have. But within this reports folder here, this changes.html, this is something that I find to be just really just a, a home run for my operational folks here. So this is where I can come in now. I can see what, what objects are actually part of this, this artifact here. And this is how I can kind of track the change. Here, for example, my contacts table, right? I had a Twitter ID column. I dropped it. Hence why it's shaded in red. I re-added it. And then now also my introduction of my TikTok column here. Okay, so I can go through each of those object changes, any coding issues, okay? Those same things that we saw way back in, in development with SQL prompt. I'm also given another opportunity now as a DBA to take a look at that and be given a heads up at potential areas of concern there. And because we, again, we're using the comparison tool to do that progression, all we're doing is doing those compares, any kind of warnings would be presented to me here as well. Maybe I dropped a column by mistake and uh, we forgot to uh, take uh, adherence to that data that might also be lost. And then lastly, this is the script. Okay, this is what SQL Compare is doing for me automatically. This is where you're gonna see your alter statements. Okay, my alter for my table, my alter for my stored procedure. You should see a little bit of a highlighted area here. These are going to be where the coding issues are. So I'm not wasting a lot of time looking through this script, trying to find what those issues that we're complaining about. So it just brings my eye right to it. This is now the source of deployment. As I take this script and I keep moving this all the way onwards and upwards into production. 
We're at the top, or I should say, yeah, we're at the top of the hour here, folks. I've given you, I think, as much as I can within that 30-minute time. I want to thank you for giving me the time today. I hope you're enjoying Pass. Ideally, if there's something else that you might want to come away with, or there's a little bit more of a deeper dive, by all means, please reach out to the account teams here at Redgate. Make an appointment with myself or one of my colleagues in pre-sales. We'll be more than happy to do uh, webinars where we can really get into the nitty gritty of this tool, the value add that it brings to the entire process. Uh, this will be something of uh, a pleasure for me to do so. But uh, uh, thank you again for the time. And, uh, and again, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day there. Uh, there are a couple of questions there, if uh, Annabelle, you don't mind. Of course, yeah, a few questions for you, uh, Chris. So the first one is, do we have, or do we support the latest version of SSMS? We do, we Absolutely. do. We are in lockstep with Microsoft folks. So just keep that in mind. And um, will these plug into data, Azure Data Studio? Azure Data Studio. Uh, so right now I know we have SQL Prompt available within Azure Data Studio. As far as SQL change automation, uh, this is something that we are working very diligently to get support for. So uh, I think this is going to be something uh, within the first quarter of 2021. This will definitely be something supported within Azure Data Studio. Great. Well, th thanks for answering those, Chris. And thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, like Chris said, if you want to reach out to us for more info, you can visit us at the virtual booth throughout the day, today, tomorrow. Chris will be on tomorrow. And oh, yeah. also just drop us an email. Um, you can do that via the virtual booth, send a, a request, and we will be right back in touch with you. Thanks again for your time today, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks all.